Hello, welcome to Layers with Larry. I'm Larry, these are all my layers. So today we're going to be talking about some fossils from the early part of the Cambrian, and they're from the Grovant Formation. Uh, that's a marine deposit, in fact the first oceans that existed on the western edge of the North American continent. And in them we found uh, traces of creatures called trilobites. And so I pointed to the Grovant Formation a moment ago and uh, mentioned it's Cambrian age. That's the first age when complex animals were on Earth. They were invertebrates, creatures without backbones. Most of them had very uh, soft sort of bodies, inside and outside. But later in the Cambrian period, uh, there was a lot of competition between the predators and the prey, and prey started getting smart. They started developing a very hard outer coating to protect themselves. And one of the creatures that did that are a really cool group of creatures that lived for around 250 million years. And they started in the Cambrian, and fortunately, the Draper Museum was able to make a, an interesting collection of some very rare specimens of trilobites because they're not found in Wyoming much at all. Some places in the United States are very common, but there's only a handful of spots and a handful of specimens that have been found. And uh, we found these really cool pieces of a, a trilobite called Sedaria. And uh, as you can see, in a typical trilobite, it has certain body parts exemplified by this head region with eyes and often these little spines coming down, we'll say something about those in a moment, and a tail-like section called the pygidium, and then this middle part, which is segments that were jointed together. Uh, that's why they're called arthropods. Literally, the word means jointed legs, but in this case, it, it can kind of refer to the whole body. Um, a very large trilobite, like this one, uh, which was found in Morocco in North Africa, really lets you see in an actual specimen those body parts. Here's his head region, his eyes, these little spines that come down from the side, tiny little tail part, and then this large section in between. You know, that flexibility gave them the ability to protect themselves. And there's a variety of ways they did that. Some of them, when they were attacked by predators, could protect themselves by rolling up into a, a ball, because their underside was very soft. So here's an example of one from um, also Morocco. This is young compared to these guys. These are like 510 million years old. This guy's only like 350 million years old. He lived around the time when fishes were starting to develop. And that's another story too about fishes and trilobites because when fishes invented jaws, trilobites went extinct. They couldn't survive that crunch, crunch. But these guys, if they got attacked or um, you know, a bunch of sediment came down the slope and attempted to cover them up, they would roll up into a little ball. And this is actually one of these that was buried and you know, killed by something and buried probably alive. And it happened to have rolled up. There's this little tail part and there's this little jointed middle part and eyes. And these are pretty complex eyes compared to these early guys. These are compound eyes like you'd see on a, like an insect or a, a crab or something like that. But what we found of, of our trilobites, in, our Wyoming trilobites, uh, north of Cody um, in some very special deposits, which unlike this, which is from the same part of the Grovant Formation, this is all knobbly and full of like burrows and tracks and stuff. We don't find any trilobites in there because all that burrowing and caused them to, any fossils that were there to get destroyed. If we're very, very lucky. We find places like where this came from, which was a fine mud that wasn't getting disturbed. And so as trilobites molted, and they did that, like all arthropods do in order to grow. They pull their soft body out of their shell and they secrete a new hard shell. And then those shells that were left over sometimes could get buried and preserved. Here we've got some trilobite, well, trilobites, I guess we could call them, but they're trilobite tails. And then their head region, we found pieces of that. We found some pieces of the little spines on the side, uh, the guinal spines as they're called. And in some cases, uh, we, you know, even when, they, when the shale split apart, so this was together, when I hit the side, it opened up like the pages of a book and revealed inside a very nice pygidium or tail of a quite large sedaria. Sedarias are mostly pretty small. This picture is enlarged. The, the real thing's only about less than an inch long. And these guys are up to three inches long. They might be a new species. That would be exciting. One other way, way that uh, trilobites could protect themselves is that if they're laying on the soft mud and say the currents are getting strong or they, they, they just want to sleep for the night perhaps, they would use their little legs that are underneath their body and they would scoop out the mud underneath them and so it would make a little depression that they would set down into. And that would prevent them being infected and turned over and, and rolled along and exposed to the predators. 
And when they left that nest, it would leave that little depression. If volcanic ash or a bunch of sediment comes along and gets dumped on top of that, it's different sediment than the sediment that the little nest was in. And after that gets covered by 30,000 feet of rock, sometimes we'll see this. This is a, a reverse impression of one of these trilobite nests. You can see the impressions of the legs of the trilobite left as it dug with both sides of its body and formed this little double furrowed sort of a structure. It's called the Rus ficus. And there's other little tracks and trails ways through there. There's no fish, there's no people, there's no vertebrates, there's just simple life forms in the sea. The Paleozoic, ancient animals.